Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great beginning to this Wednesday. As you can see behind me, uh, we're a little foggy. So uh, hopefully you're not foggy. I feel a little foggy in here. You know, maybe you're feeling that way as well. With that being said, though, I want to encourage you and remind you of a few things that are coming up. First, this Sunday is our trunk or treat. So can you please, please pray uh, that uh, the weather would cooperate from the hours of 2 to 5 p.m.? So we're going to be as specific with the Lord as possible so that we can get as many people as possible, especially those who don't yet know Jesus. Uh, in addition, it allows us uh, to be uh, open. Uh, I mean, it should be, we should, should say it this way. It allows us to be at home as we go through uh, Halloween night. Now, tomorrow I want to spend a little bit of time talking about why uh, we celebrate um, or we actually participate in this holiday. Because I get that question every single year. And so we want to make sure that we are biblical, that we are following God's spirit, guided by his word uh, in the lives of how he's called us to lead and be guided by him. So I'll spend a little bit of time with that tomorrow. But uh, today I want to go to day three. So we are in uh, Genesis chapter 11 today at the very end. Uh, we've looked at this idea of Abram, who's now Ab who's going to become Abraham, who has been called to follow God. And we are called to do the same thing. And so what's interesting is, uh, as I mentioned on Sunday, is the end, last part of Genesis chapter 11, verse 31, it says, One day, Terah took his son Abram, his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son, his son Abram's wife, and his grandson Lot, his son Haran's child, and moved from the Ur of the Chaldeans. He was headed to the land of Canaan, but they stopped at Haran and settled there. Terah lived for 205 years and died while still in Haran. And so I want to remind you uh, that uh, this was a new insight for me, that he settled, settled in Haran. So the Bible says he was on his way to Canaan, the land of Canaan, to the promised land. But again, he settled in Haran. So they're halfway there. So the reason I say that is because our temptation is to settle when it comes to following Jesus. We go halfway or part way. And there's that temptation to be like, no, Jesus, I'm so grateful that you gave it for me. And so I raise my hand. I pray a prayer. I attend church every once in a while. I just want to make sure I am doing the minimum or I'm going part way instead of Jesus saying, no, no, I want you to go all the way with me. Go all the way to the land. Go all the way because you and I are not finished. God's not done with you and he's not done with me and he's not done with our church. And so as I, I mentioned, what if Valley Real Life had stopped? What if we had stopped part way? Uh, what if we stop right now? Who knows the impact that God wants to do through our church? I do know there's a lot of attacks that are taking place to our people as well as to our staff and elders. And it lets me know in a weird form of encouragement that Satan wants to stop what God is trying to do. And so we must be on the right path, right, the right trajectory. But it's going to cost. It's going to cost us resources. It's going to cost us time. It's going to cost us, you know, um, some things that maybe we want to do in our lives in order to fulfill what God wants to do in and through our lives and through our church. And so what is that for you that you've stopped, that you said, you know what, God, I, I'm only going part way when it comes to connecting with you. And so the, 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 the temptation, you know, for us, you know, is to say, you know what, um, everything but that. That's another way to look at it. God, you can have everything in my life. I'm going to settle when it comes to my relationships. You get everything, but I get my relationships. You get everything, but I get my career. God, you get everything, but I get my health. You get everything, but I get my future. And God says, no, 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 I want it all. We've got to deny ourselves, pick up our cross daily, and follow him. Uh, it's interesting, in our world, I see this so often, where people are like, no, 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 I just want to be led by how I feel. I was obviously born this way. I was obviously uh, um, leaned toward this way. So God created me this way. No, 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 no. We are created and in our created and fallen state, we are sinful beings. And so no matter how we may feel, no matter what we may think about ourselves, we are all called to deny ourselves, to deny our feelings if it's not in line with God and his word, to deny how we view the world or what we think is most important in order for us to follow him. That's God's desire for us, that you and I would say, you know what, today, it's not gonna be about me, it's gonna be about you. But here's the promise. When we do, our lives are more abundant, more fulfilling, more transformative in our own hearts and minds as well as in the lives of other people. Is it the easier life? No. It's always the harder life. 
but it's the life worth lived because of what we're living for and who we're living for. And so it makes it all worth it. So what's holding you back from truly following Jesus? You know, so for many people, it's just the different things. And so I just want to encourage you on this day to say, you know what? I'm not going to go part way. I'm going all the way. I'm going to go to the next step that God is calling and leading. And I'm going to surrender that to him at this moment because it's really, really cool. And you're not going to want to miss this weekend because we're going to talk so much, you know, about how God makes up for our shortfall, that he comes in and he helps us in the midst of it all. So I hope that's encouraging for you. I hope it's a challenging for you. I even gave a look, it looks like I gave a thumbs up for you. You know, there it is again, you're welcome. So I love you guys, let me pray. Jesus, thank you so much that you gave it all, so may we give it back. We deny ourselves. The self part of us that is contrary to you, to your will, to your guidance, to your leading. And we wanna pick up our cross, meaning we wanna die to ourselves. And we wanna follow you. So help us to do that on this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, have a great rest of the day and uh, I will see you again tomorrow. Like I said, we'll do some of this, but we're going to talk about why it's important to follow God when it comes to Halloween, when it comes to this, this holiday is because people get very confused. And so if you've got friends, you know, or people are like, you know, I would really like to know why do churches even put on trunk or treats? Why do they do harvest festivals? Why are Christians dressing up? Why do they seem to participate in what's a satanic holiday? That's what I hear. Love to talk to you about that tomorrow. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.